Hello, my name is Nato, and in this video I'm going to show you how to launch the Chivalry Editor and how to prepare your map to upload up onto the Steam Workshop. So first off, let's open up Chivalry. As you can see from the launcher, you have two options here on the Medieval Warfare side. You have Play and you have Launch Editor. You want to hit Launch Editor. This will load up what's known as the SDK front end. This can be really intimidating if you've never seen it before, but don't worry too much, it's quite simple. The important button here is the Launch Editor button. You want to go ahead and press that, and that will launch into the actual editor rather than the front end here. This can take a little time, so don't worry too much. Uh, especially if you've never opened it before, or haven't opened it in a while, it has to go through and check a lot of things before it does so. Now that we've opened the editor, let's go about setting up our level ready for uploading onto the Steam Workshop. The first thing you're going to want to do is save your file. And you're going to want to give it the prefix AOC, which tells Chivalry that it's an acceptable map. Next, you want to give it the game type prefix. In this case, I'm going to use a free for all prefix, which is FFA, followed by a slash, and then the name of the map. I'm going to use test in this example. Now, occasionally, you will see an underscore P at the end of map names. Now, this is mostly because it's the, uh, the denotation for a persistent map in a streaming system. And most of the time you won't need this, so for this example I'm going to leave it off. And then finally you'll want to add the .udk extension and save. And then you can start building your map. Now obviously I'm not going to go through doing that in this video. What I will talk about is building your map before you release. Now there are two main lighting settings that you will use. first one is preview which uh, will give a very rough preview of how your lighting will look. It's perfectly adequate for sorting it out and uh, testing things, and will give relatively short build times. When you are ready to release your map to the public, uh, or a final release, you will want to build on production. Now the problem with production is it will take significantly longer. Uh, preview maps normally take, for me, about 20 minutes, and on a production build it will normally take about two and a half hours. That's the, uh, that's the scale of difference here. And then finally, when you are ready to build your map, hit the Build All button and wait until your map is fully built. Uh, this can take some time, dependent on how powerful your computer is. Um, like I said, for me, on Cove, for example, my team objective map, um, it took about 20 minutes on a, on a standard preview build. Anyway, let's uh, wait for this to be finished. Okay, now our map has built. We get this little test check map, map check even, <laughs> sorry, map check window, which will show any errors that your map has uh, uncovered while, being, while it's being built. As you can see here, we have maps not built with production lighting. That's uh, something we know about and not a problem. What you have to watch out here for are errors such as not enough player starts or invalid player starts or any major, often they are red circles with exclamation marks in rather than yellow triangles. Anyway, we can close that. We can make sure we have saved our file completely. Then we can open up the SDK front end again. Now this is the part that really defines how your file is viewed on the Steam Workshop. So if you're starting a new item, you can click the New Workshop Item button here. And you need to give it a name. Now this isn't the name that people will see on the Steam Workshop, but this is a sort of internal name so that you know what the file is. So I'm just going to give it a test name. You can select the profile down here, and you can set the actual workshop title here. So let's go with Test Workshop Item. You can also change the description, and you can also add an image. Now, I have an image I know I want to use. which I've stored on my C drive. The next important step is to hit the Add button under Maps to Cook. Now this defines which maps will be included into the download and it's very important to make sure that you have the correct maps in here. So for us this is AOC FFA hyphen test dot UDK. You can find it on this list here and click the Add Selected Maps. Now that this is in here we can double check that we have a map that does not require mod to play. It's not a fortification map contest entry. We also have our name set, we have our description set, and we have our image set. 
So we can go ahead and hit the Start button. Now this will compile any scripts that we have, it will cook our maps, and then it will upload it to the workshop. This, again, can take some time, but uh, we will deal with that by an edit. OK, so once you see this All Pipeline Steps Completed Successfully message, that means your map has successfully been put up onto the Steam Workshop. And we can test this by heading over to the Steam Workshop page, as we saw in the previous video, or in the video about subscribing to items. It's exactly the same process. However, you can click the Your Workshop Files button here, and it will take you to the page covering your workshop files in particular. As you can see here, we have Test, Test Workshop Item, and we have a free for all map with the description Hello World and the map included AOC FFA test.udk. So that map is now up on the workshop. Anyone can subscribe to it, anyone can uh, comment on it and view it. If, for whatever reason, you wanted to change the visibility, you can here. You can set it to do friends only, or hidden, or public. So that is a brief description of how to upload things up onto the Steam Workshop. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that it's useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.